So good day, everyone. Welcome uh, to another Shamans Directory live community event. Uh, I'm Mayumi Beckers from the Netherlands, and I'm one of the founding members of the directory, and I will be your host today. And I thank you all for taking the time today to be with us here. And uh, if you like, you can say hello in the chat if you want and say where you're from. And I also encourage you to settle in nicely in your own sacred space. And perhaps you want to light up a candle and take us some deep breaths. And so we can be fully present to receive the wonderful wisdom and knowledge that will be offered to us today uh, by our special guest, Joan Padisi Wilcox. And uh, she's also one of the Shamans Directory ambassador. And we are truly honored to have her here today. And she will be speaking today about the sacred self, the potential and power of your Inca seat. So that's truly exciting. And before we dive into her talk, I uh, like to explain a little bit about Shamus Directory. Um, Shamus Directory is a new global online platform for shamanic services. And we are a nonprofit created for healers and teachers, clients, and everyone who's curious about the world of shamanism. And we're not just a directory, we are also a movement and a global community uh, who are sharing a vision together. And we are here to celebrate uh, all of the worlds of shamanic wisdom and knowledge, all of the earth-based wisdom and knowledge from around the world and demystify shamanism and make shamanic healing accessible to all. And as well in these times of great change. And we believe that this might hold the key for a brighter future. And our global community is growing steadily, steadily as we welcome healers and teachers to unite with us uh, and support our uh, collective One Fire, oh, One Medicine. Um, sorry, I hear the, someone speaking. So uh, what we also like to say that uh, together we are a powerful medicine as it takes all of us to be within this together and create this positive change on a global scale. And our registration to shamanic healers and teachers is open for application to become listed on our directory. And if you already belong to another directory, then we see this as an invitation uh, to join us and to expand your uh, exposure and uh, increase your healing capacity. And up till this day, we've been working hard on the website. The search function has not been live yet, but it will be this month so uh, people and clients can actually search for shamanic healers and book an appointment so that's something to look forward to and we will also um, extend uh, the membership for free till the end of this year so if you are interested to join us and the directory and expand your service and become part of your warm and dedicated community, then we invite you to go to our uh, website uh, on shamusdirectory.com and go to our get listed page to apply. And so that was a little bit about our directory. So let me just briefly introduce before we go into the talk about Joan. And uh, Joan has studied the Indian sacred arts for close to three decades and teaches the, the tradition to students around the globe. She's the author of Masters of the Living Energy, The Mystical World of the Keto of Peru, and two other books. She has written dozens of magazine articles, been interviewed for podcasts and radio, and appeared in several documentary films about the Andean mystical tradition and metaphysics in general. Through her blog, uh, Kentiwasi, which means House of the Hummingbird, she shares the wisdom of the Andes. In the past, she has worked with frontier scientists exploring the new biology, including the human biofield. She has served as mistress of ceremonies and lectured at bioenergetic conferences in the United States and Europe. Joan has also worked as a freelance book editor for publishers specializing in books on metaphysics and frontier science. She loves to explore at the boundaries of the known and collaborate with other curiosity seekers. 
So what I also would like to say that for our, throughout our talk today, there is room for questions. So uh, please feel free to put them in the chat and we uh, hope to cover them all. And who do, who, for those who are not familiar with Zoom, you can uh, go to the bottom of your screen and press the chat button so you can type in your questions in there. And uh, you can also change your uh, viewing screen at the top right corner to gallery view or speaker view. So these are just the technicalities around that. And now I warmly like to welcome Joan to our uh, session today. So hello, Joan. Thank you. It's a delight to be here. And um, I just like to honor you, Tricia, the whole team. Um, for creating Shaman's Directory have done just a stupendous job. And um, let's all get the word out because it is one fire, one medicine for sure. Many paths to the same goal, which is to live as the grandest human beings we can be with the greatest amount of grace and in interaction with each other and the living universe. And Shaman's Directory is a huge step forward in that endeavor. So thank you. Thank you, Joe, for these uh, warm words and supportive uh, yeah, uh, thoughts around that. I wanted to, yeah, let's begin. And I wanted to uh, ask you a question about for those who are maybe not so familiar about the Indian traditions, as you've been studying and practicing this for nearly 30 years, uh, could you explain briefly what it, what it is about so people can get a feel for it? You know, I think that um, a way in for those who are new to this is to say that I think at some time in our lives that we've all asked the grand questions, you know, who am I, what am I here to do, how can I live my life with the greatest amount of passion and joy and grandeur, um, is the universe conscious, can I interact with it. Um, and there are many traditions that provide answers to those huge kind of existential questions. And the Andean tradition is one. Um, after studying many traditions, I find the Andean tradition, um, and, and I, just as a little aside, I wanna make clear that this isn't just a Caro tradition. The Caro are just one nation and, uh, throughout the Andes. They're seen as the masters of the tradition but they're not the only ones carrying this medicine. Um, but this is the tradition from the South Central Mountains of Peru. There are a lot of different spiritual traditions throughout Peru, and they're all, uh, there's at least three major ones. They're very different. So we're situating ourselves in the mountains of, of Peru. And um, um, this is a tradition that answers those questions, in my experience in a very simple, direct, uh, easily accessible way. Um, we have grand, a grand goal to answer all of those questions. And not only to answer those questions, but to learn how to live and fulfill those intentions and desires. And the Andean tradition, I like to say, is like a PhD in energy dynamics. It really distills down the uh, practices and the cosmovision for us to answer those questions and to fulfill them in our lives. It's uh, not a tradition of fear. There's nothing to protect yourself from energetically. It's not a tradition of judgment. There's not a, a, a really no rights or wrongs or do's and don'ts at least practicing it from what we call the fourth level, which is more the level of an artist rather than a technician. A technician can do things right or wrong. An artist is always in reciprocity with the universe, expressing themselves, and that is uh, not right or wrong or good or bad. It just is. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a tradition of judgment. Um, it's not a tradition of complexity. It's not simplistic, but it's very direct and simple. And um, I think this is what gives it both its grace and its power. Um, it's predicated on the um, 
foundational natural law of Aini. Aini can best be translated as reciprocity. And this is our, um, the feedback loops we're in with the living universe. And to answer one of those questions I asked at the beginning, is the universe alive and conscious? Yes, it is. Um, uh, beyond an anthropomorphic overlay, it's not like a human being, you know, um, but it has its, its, its aware and um, we can interact with it. And so our practices are about how to most skillfully, easily, uh, effectively and productively be in conscious awareness and interchange with the living universe. This is called Aini. It's kind of like a call and response, okay? We have awareness, we have desires and emotions and we can take actions and we can speak and all of those kinds of things. And that's an energy we're putting out to our fellow human beings and out to the Kausai Pacha, the conscious universe. And that we get a response just like we get a response from the people we interact with, we can get a response from the universe. It's not gonna talk back to us like a human being or you know, act like we can in the physical body, but we're going to receive a commensurate response from the universe. And um, this is like the natural law of the Andes that intention moves energy. Energy must follow intention, okay? Um, and so the tradition, the, the cosmovision, the energy dynamics and the practices, especially the practices, are all about us refining, uh, accumulating our personal power to be in as conscious and grateful and beautiful and effective um, interaction with our fellow human beings and with the living universe. Now, let me define personal power because it has nothing to do with dominance. Um, personal power is another uh, term for our carpi. Carpi, many people know the word carpi, which is K-A-R-P-A-Y, as an initiation, or, but really carpi means transmission. It's a transmission, an exchange of energy. And another meaning of the word carpi is your personal power. What you have available to you at this very moment to use in your life. What capacities you have conscious aware uh, well, it could also be unconscious, but um, the capacities you have to use as a human being in the physical human world and an in interaction with the living universe. So our practices are almost all directed toward us being aware of our carpi, finding where we have unlived capacities, and so increasing our carpi, we call it accumulating personal power and then consciously using our carpi, okay? Um, there's a concept in the Andes um, called the conscious patanyan. It's the bedrock of the tradition because the tradition's all about our personal conscious development. The conscious patanyan is, translates roughly to the stairway of the seven levels of development or consciousness. And so all of our practices are directed at us becoming more aware, increasing our, the access to all of our capacities instead of just using a subset or only a few of our capacities, being in more effective Aini with the universe. And as we do that, as we step up this conscious patanyan, we're developing ourselves to higher and higher levels of our own conscious uh, knowledge and awareness of ourselves, but of also of how we are in Aini with other human beings and with the, uh, with the universe. Um, 
If you don't mind me just going on a little bit longer for a few other key concepts. Please, yeah, know. go on, Joan. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, our, our carpi, we're kept from realizing the fullness of our carpi, of all of our capacities. And let me say that your carpi is different than my carpi. Okay, you are a different drop of the mystery. You're a different aspect of God than I am. And you have had a different life experience, family experience, challenges. You have different gifts, um, all of those kinds of things. So each of us is unique. And we have, so we have, we share the same capacities as human beings and as spirit beings, but our expression is different because of our different lived experience, personalities, predispositions, and those kinds of things. So what keeps us from um, stepping up this conscious patanya or more consciously developing ourselves is that our aini is not perfect, okay? Um, and, and the, I'll talk about aini, I think a little bit later when I talk about the mystical body, but, um, what keeps us from being in perfect Aini has a lot to do with our human psychology, with the way that we're largely unconscious to so much of ourselves. We keep up so much of ourselves hidden. We're not fully aware of why we're doing what we're doing, why we want what we want, why we say what we say or act like what we say. And, um, um, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the chat here. Can someone spell? Oh, the conscious patanyan. Um, okay, it's Q A N Q A N C H I S P A T A N Y A. It's the Spanish N with the tilde over it. A N. Conscious patanyan. Okay. And this is the, the stairway of the seven steps of human development. What keeps us from progressing up that and what keeps us from being in more perfect Aini is so much of ourselves is hidden. We don't really understand why we do what we do, why we say what we say, sometimes even why we believe what we believe. We have what we call a shadow. We have masks, personas. We're getting into kind of Jungian psychology. And this keeps us from awareness Aini is not just interchanges with the living universe. Aini is the awareness of the interchanges we are making. Okay. Because um, we can't be an Aini if we're not aware, because the un it's a feedback loop. Part of Aini is not only putting out our intentions, and we're doing that all the time, largely consciously, which is why we get feedback that is not necessarily what we think it should be, okay? But it's not only us being aware of how we're sending out energy, either to other human beings or the universe. There's no Aini if you're not aware of the feedback you're getting, because feedback is, is crucially important to you, un, to you getting clues about how well you're in Aini what your state of awareness is, how much lightness you're bringing to the world or heaviness to the world. It's the universe giving you kind of a measurement point, a way to gauge. Um, feedback is never punishment, okay? We don't go into that whole Christian kind of a thing, okay? It's simply, if you get something heavy back because you're giving out something heavy, it's not punishment, it's simply feedback. And it's, it's crucial that we pay attention to the feedback because that allows us to increase our self-awareness, our self-inquiry, and then to make adjustments. You know, they, what, what do they say that um, crazy is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result? <laughs> okay. That's why feedback in, the, in our INI is important because it prevents us from just being in this loop of creating heaviness. We're paying attention to the feedback when we make adjustments. And so really all of our practices are, are geared toward us being more self-aware, being able to consciously manage our energy interactions, shifting our heaviness to lightness, 
being more aware of our Aini, perfecting our Aini. And as we'll discover later in this discussion in our conversation, that this is about flowering what we call our Inca seed, the self with a capital S, okay? Um, okay, questions or comments up to this point or Naomi? Um, well, no, I think it would be nice to go into the Inca seed, the theme of today, and uh, what, what do you like to, yeah, how, what, what is the Inca seed in the mythical terms of the Andean traditions? Okay, before I can really get into the Inca seed, I think it's useful to talk about what we are, that we have a physical and a mystical bodies, okay? So in the tradition, we say that we are, are the wholeness of ourselves is the wasi. Wasi means home or house or temple, sanctuary, okay? And our wasi is comprised of two aspects. The hanchi, the hanchi is the physical body. And um, if everybody could mute themselves, because um, we're getting some feedback, thank you. So the hanchi is the physical body. And um, the physical body has its own power, beauty, energetics, um, and then we have the poko, which is this energetic egg, you might say, where it surrounds our physical body and penetrates our physical body, our poko. The poko is a huge information field. You don't get your own poko until the moment you're born. Before that, you're in your mother's energy body in her poko. The minute you're born, you start forming your own popo. And your popo, if we're going to make an, uh, uh, an association that makes sense to us, we can go into Jungian or into psychology and say your popo is your soul. It's your human experience. It's everything that you believe, that you've been taught, that you um, experience, okay? It's all imprinted in your popo. Your popo together with your body, so your soul and your body create your wasi, your temple. And at the center of this temple is the Inca seed, the Inca muyu, M-U-Y-U. Muyu means circle or, or ring. Um, in this case, it means seed. It sits at the, it, and that is your spirit. Wasi is your body, your soul, and your spirit. And um, I'm sorry, I have to put my glasses on to see the chat. Yes, Inca Muyu. Right. And um, so your, your Wasi is really comp comprised of the three of those. Um, your, let's just talk for a minute about your body and, and then move outward and then back inward. Your body is, um, at the core of your body is, in the center of each cell, is DNA. DNA is a huge information field. It's the information field for your hanchi and partly for your popo, okay, your personality as well as your physical body. And it's a tiny little thing. A, a, a typical human cell is like one micron across, like something like, I don't know, one to the 200 thousandths of an inch. But inside that tiny, tiny little space is all of the information to create you. If you were to stretch that DNA out from one cell, it would be six feet long. If you were to stretch out all the DNA in your 25 or 30 trillion cells, it would stretch out for 67 billion miles. That's how much information is inside your physical body. A tiny structure with a huge information field. Your popo is a huge information field as well. But at the center of your body, we have a mystical body as well. I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. But at the center of our mystical body, 
the mystical body includes the popo, but it's also different from the popo. At the center of the mystical body, at the very center of your body, below your rib cage, maybe halfway between your navel and your the curve of your rib cage, halfway between the front and back of your body is the Inca Muyu. And it's a tiny, tiny little energetic structure with a huge information field. It contains within it everything you need for you in your unique karpa, for you to express yourself as God in the human and as the human as God. I'm gonna use the word God. We don't know what that is. Creator, first cause, whatever, okay? The conscious patanyan, seven steps. The sixth step is the level of the enlightened human being. That's the Christ or the Buddha. <clears throat> The seventh step is Ranti. Ranti is, means equivalent, the same as. Taitanchas, which is God. So after we reach enlightenment with it, which is a huge achievement in the human form, we can become what we truly are, our spirit, express our spirit, which is God. God-like qualities in the human form and the human form as um, godlike. You get your Inca seed at the moment of conception. At the moment the sperm and the egg meet and, and that zygote, it's fertilized. This drop of the mystery comes down. This, this, this stream of the, the creator energy comes down into that cell and it becomes you. And you are different than me. And we're all different from each other. We're all a different agglomeration, com com composition of aspects of the God. And it, that's your Inca seed, that's your spirit. That's the first thing you get. Your, the beginning, the information field, the DNA information field of your body and the information field of whatever creator is, your Inca seed, they're both together at that first moment. And so all of the practices of the Andean tradition are about you developing your Inca seed, developing your capacity to step up these continuing levels of consciousness and express your full karpai. Your full karpai is you as godlike in the human form. Okay. So the Inca seeds at the center of this mystical body just like we have a physical, we have physical organs, we have a physical metabolism, we have energetic organs and an energetic metabolism as well. Um, we'll talk about one of them briefly here, and that is, so we have physical eyes, we have sensory organs, ears, eyes, okay, capacity for touch, smell, taste. Our major mystical sensory organs are called the nyawis, Nya A W I, nyawi. It means eye in Quechua. There, even though it's called an eye, it's not just visual, it's actually an energetic receptor. It, it can, it's like a full sensory organ for, for energy flows. And um, we have seven of them. They're not chakras, they're not, chakras are a parallel system, but there are some major differences. We have seven of these mystical eyes. <clears throat> Just briefly, working from the bottom, we count the eyes, the first eye, up to the seventh eye, we start counting at the bottom of the body, at the trunk of the body, which is the seeking nyawi, the eye of the root, it's at the base of your spine, just above your butt. Um, and then we come up in the, that's, it's looking behind you. It's the only eye looking behind you, okay? Then, and these eyes are three-dimensional structures. They're like cones with the eye opening on one end and then they come back to a point. So the eye in the back of the siki, a root of the body, and the cone comes forward and touches the inside at the level of our pubic bone in the front of our body. We come up in the front of the body to the belly, to the Costco, 
And the Costco Miaui, it's looking in front of us. The cone comes back and the root of the cone touches the sapi or the rapi, depending on which dictionary you use, touches the spinal cord in the back. That's the eye of the belly or the eye of the navel. Then we come up to the chest. We have the sonko nyawi, which in most dictionaries will translate to the eye of the heart. Again, the openings in the front, the root comes back and touches the spine in the back. But sonko doesn't, in, in Paco terms, sonko doesn't mean heart. Sonko means feelings. It's the eye of our feelings. The heart is a different organ. The art, heart is the pirhua. Uh, in or Piri in um, Quechua. It's not the, it's, it's situated near the Sanko. And we always talk about this as the eye of the heart, but I wanna be clear that this is the center of our feelings. Then we come up to the throat. The Kunka means neck in Quechua. We have the eye of the, the throat of the neck. And then we have the uh, um, Yoke Nyawi. The left physical eye is also a mystical eye. The panya nyawi, the right physical eye. This is so we've come up now. This is five and six, and and then the seventh is in the center of our forehead, which is the conscious nyawi. It just means conscious means seven. Okay, we have some secondary centers. They're not nyawis. They're one in the palm of each hand, one in the sole of each foot, and one at the top of our head, and we have one other special little energy center called the Pukyu, means spring. And it's at the fontanelle. When you're a baby, when the, the two plates close, if we follow it down right above your hairline, is the Pukyu. And through this spring, you're always drawing in the life force energy. And it's always going down and connecting to your Inca seed in the center of your body. So your Inca seed is always and constantly connected and receiving the flow of the God energy, of the, the living energy of the universe, okay? So that's our mystical body or part of our mystical body. So we, and that makes up our wasi, the physical body, the popo, the mystical body. Each of these eyes also have capacities. And this all makes, this all is necessary to kind of know, to understand how you develop your Inca seeds. So just bear with me for another minute or so. But each of these nyawis have capacities, human capacities. We all have three human capacities, yachai, munai, yankai. Yachai is our capacity for intellect, logic, rationality, learning, okay, uh, perception. Yankai our ability to act in the world, to take action, to do work, to undertake projects and to uh, actually activate desires and intentions by doing. And then Munai. Munai, we can't define by one English word. We have to use two. Uh, in the Andes, they use the word Munai to refer to your will, your intention, and they use the word munai to refer to your love. And um, that is the definition of munai, love under your will, the choice for love, not the emotion of love, but kind of the platonic feeling of love, the, the, the choice for love. And um, so we all want to develop our three human powers. That's part of our carpi. But we also have capacities at these nyawis and we can develop them at each nyawi. So working down, this is the eye that is most perceptive to the mystical universe. Through these two physical eyes, we see, perceive the physical universe. The seventh eye, we see the mystical universe. And together, the capacity of these three eyes is called kawai. Kawai means to see, vision. But it's, it's, its meaning is the visionary. You can only know all of reality if you can 
perceive, work with, um, and be in Aini with both the physical world and the metaphysical world. That's the whole of reality. And that's these three eyes. Of course, we see mystically through all the eyes or we perceive their full perceptual organs. We perceive through all of them, but that's the main capacity of these three eyes. At the, at the neck, the capacity is yachai, is our knowledge, our experience, and rimai. Rimai is, generally rimai means the capacity to express any of your, um, your powers, okay? But specifically here, it's the capacity to speak with integrity and power, to communicate with integrity and power. So what you're thinking and believing is actually coming out when you speak it with integrity. You're not thinking one thing and saying something else, you know. You're, you can trust your word. You say what you mean and you mean what you say. That's the integrity of your yachai and your rimai. Then we come down to the sonko. The capacity here is munai and all of your higher feelings. The capacity here is munai. The Inca seed is your capacity to be godlike in the human form. But the Inca seed and the Sonko together have a very special relationship. When they're integrated, the capacity is called Kanai. Kanai means, Ka means I, to be. Kan, Kani means I am. Kanai means I know who I am and I have the power. I have the karpai to live as who I am. That's the huge gift of the Inca seed and the Sonko together. Come down to the belly, the capacity is kuyai or kuye. Kuye is passion, but not like erotic passion. It's passion that, it's the passion to undertake things in the world, to do things, to express yourself, to, to be out in the world and, and to sustain an effort, you know, to keep going even when the going gets tough, to not just dream about something, but to have the will to put it into action. It's your kuya, your passion. And then the siki is the, the capacity there is ati, Ati has to do with, ati ni kind of means, um, um, ati ni means I can do it. So ati is your capacity to actually do things, okay? Um, your, your seeking is very, very, um, not complex, but it has a lot going on, your seeking, because it's your impulses. It's your mammalian human self all of those base survival instincts, um, food, water, procreation, protecting your territory, um, fear, those kinds of things, those base human impulses. But it's also the, pla the place where we measure our karpa. How much of myself am I able to consciously use in my life? We go down into the Siki to be able to measure how we've lifted those base impulses up energetically to be able to express these higher, more refined human powers. It's also about timing, okay? So that's kind of our mystical body. Sitting at the center of this mystical body is your Inca seed. Um, let me just take a quick little break here because there's been a bunch of questions um, in the chat box, and I think they mostly have to do with spelling. Um, Joan, I tried to sort of put it there, but uh, I may have missed some uh, parts of it, but I fall too for the audience to uh, put them in. Oh, okay, because I'm not able to. Oh, that was them. just me. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, great. Because I, because I was going to say, yeah, if you if you have my book, that there, there, there's a glossary in the back. Some of these terms are in there. I've learned a lot more since I wrote that book way back when. <laughs> okay, so some of the spellings may be not the way I spell them today. Um, in any case, um, the spellings aren't as important as you understanding kind of the 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 immense power that you have both physically, psychologically, emotionally, and mystically. 
Okay. And so Christina Allen and I have developed a class. It, it takes place over a year. It's four classes, one every two months that takes us deep into self-inquiry and into the four, the Tawantan and the Andes is, is four factors that unite to create a whole. The wholeness of the self, of the Inca seed, has four aspects psychologically. Our persona, our shadow, our animu and anima, or our male-female aspects, and then the self. And we work through in very deep ways these four aspects of our psychology in order to touch in with our Inca seed and to stop creating Pucha in the first place. And that's called the inner Tawantin class. Okay. Um, and then we just have some classes where Pacos get together and Christina and I are there and they get to ask whatever questions they want about living as a Paco. And we meet once a month on that. So, so there's lots of resources if this is kind of, you know, ringing your bell. <laughs> okay. So, um, but uh, any other questions or comments about what we've talked about so far? I think we can move on maybe. Uh, yes, yes. You were, yeah, I think you want to mention about that as well, about the Hucha and Sami, or how do we nurture the Inca seed, uh, you know, throughout our lives and how, um, yeah, we actually yep. can grow it also on a daily base. So can you maybe talk yes. more um, about that? So our, our, um, our goal is to become more consciously, more aware of our Aini, of our energy exchanges. And when we pay attention to the feedback from the universe, we can kind of gauge, get a little bit of a sense of how well we're doing or not. Our Aini is not perfect because we're not, none of us is enlightened human beings. Um, if you are, let me know, but I don't, you know, I think most of us aren't yet, right? So we're, we're not in, our Aini is not uh, perfected, or sometimes even very uh, graceful or powerful or smooth. Um, and our, the feedback, what, 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 the kind of the quality of energy we can be putting out and the feedback we get in return is commensurate to what we're putting out is really of two flavors of two kinds. There's the, there's the life force energy, okay? Just the, the absolute life force energy. We're always absorbing this life force energy. There's two words for kausai, which is the living energy. We call it sami, the light living energy. It's not light in terms of visible light. It's light in terms of a lightness of being, the quality of being of this, of this, this energy. We're always absorbing it and radiating it. Okay, we can't not be as long as we're alive. Okay, everything, animals, humans, trees, we're always we're absorbing this life force energy, which is keeping us alive, imparting its power, you know, so empowering us, giving us vitality and well being, and then we're radiating it. Okay, so we want to be as perfect absorbers and radiators as we can. But because of all of that emotional stuff, our unconscious, all of the, you know, psychological stuff I just kind of talked about a little bit. We end up not being perfect absorbers of Sami. We slow some of it down. So it's moving sluggishly, or we even block it. It just accumulates on the skin. We have an outer surface to our popo, to our energy bubble. And it accumulates there It can get through, but it doesn't get very deep, okay? There's, there's mystical anatomy reasons that you usually doesn't get very deep, but it, we accumulate it a lot on the skin of our bubble. And that's just us not absorbing all of the full measure of Sami we're capable of. Sami is this lightness of being. As we slow it down and it accumulates, it begins to feel, we begin to perceive it as heavy. It gets heavier. It loses some of its empowerment, some of its transformative power, some of its capacity to transform and empower us. And it starts to feel a little bit heavy. 
And the symptoms of heaviness are, are just kind of an overall or in different ways, a loss of our well-being, a loss of our clarity about who we are, what we believe, the, the grace and the integrity with which we speak and act. It has all of those kinds of ramifications, our heaviness. Okay. This heaviness is not bad, negative, dirty, evil, contaminating. There is no negative, evil, bad energy in the universe. There's no need to ever protect yourself at the energetic level. I need to make clear that human beings can act in, in evil and dark and heavy ways because of our psychology, our traumas and that kind of stuff. Okay, we need to we protect ourselves from that. But at the level of the living universe, just the energetics, the core foundational energetics of the universe, it's Sami all the way down. There's only Sami, this Kausai, the living energy. It only feels heavy to us when we slow it down. Hucha is Sami. It's the light living energy. It just slowed or blocked, so we slow it down. <clears throat> and it can reduce our well-being. It can reduce our level of consciousness. It can reduce our, our ability to use our yachai, our munai, our yankai. It can reduce the ability of us to access the capacities and flower the capacities in all of our nyawis. And since our Inca seed is our full karpai, it, it, it's the top of the conscious patinyan, that God is human and the human is God. All of the, all of the, we're, 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 we're feeling heavy and we're reducing our capacity to use all of these capacities. Of course, we're keeping ourselves closed off from the fullness of the carpi of our Inca seed. It's like we only have access to a little bit of it, a little bit of its power. Okay. Again, it's this, it's this tiny little structure with this huge information field. And, um, <clears throat> Um, so we think of, think of this hucha then. All our, almost all of our practices are geared toward us becoming aware of how we're producing hucha and being able to transform it, okay? Cleaning hucha from the nyawis, using the helper spirits to enhance our capacities, all of those kinds of things. We want to trans, we want to speed that slow sami back up in, to its natural state, its capacity, its nature is to move, okay? I wanna get it moving again. And so even when we're, so, so this path as a path of consciousness means we need to develop or our work, our practices help us develop an awareness of how and why and when we're producing hucha. We have to first see that we're producing hucha or feel that we're producing hucha. The next step is to then take responsibility for it, to own it. Once you own it, then the next step is to do something about it. And our practices help us transform it back into its natural state. We call it cleansing, but that's just a metaphor, okay? And so those are the steps. First, awareness, perception, then taking responsibility, and then acting to shift, to transform, to change. Okay. And um, we know when we get, we get hucha, a lot of the way we know is through our physical body. We'll feel it. You know, um, Francine was saying, oh, you know, we, we just have a sense, we have a little sense that there's a mystical, there's truth to this mystical stuff, you know, that we have mystical eyes and stuff. It's the same with hucha. Your body will let you know because you'll start to feel like an inner dissonance. Something just feels a little off. Okay, you feel it usually in your body. 
and then it will affect your psychology and then it affects your actions in the world and it kind of gets amplified so that we kind of produce more hoochin so but we, we want to be aware of our hanchi we can't divorce ourselves from any part of our sanctuary our temple and our hanchi is our body is part of it and we'll feel that inner dissonance you know there's a beautiful quotation uh, it's attributed to rumi the persian poet um i don't know if it is it's just it's, it's open to question, but regardless of that, he says something about, if we're seeking love, our, our task is not to look outside ourselves for love, but to look inside ourselves to all the ways we're blocking ourselves from love. That's a perfect description of what we do in terms of our hucha. My life isn't working so well. My relationships aren't working so well. I don't like who I've become. I know I'm better than this or whatever. Whatever the dissonance is, we don't look to change the other person. We don't look to try to muscle our way through the living universe and try to create our reality. We can't create our, our reality. At the most, we can just influence it, okay? We look inside and we do our work. We take responsibility. We call this path, path of personal responsibility and for that uh, reason, okay? And so we need to cultivate self-inquiry. The Andean path though is not an intellectual path. We're translating it all for our nature, which is yachai, which is intellectual. They're very grounded. Um, um, they're not very metaphoric. You know, they're, they're very objective in certain ways. And so they're, they're not going to talk about it in this way. They're just going to use the practices. The Pacos are just going to use the practices. Our major practice, our daily practice, is a practice to release our hucha to transform that slow stuck energy back into Sami. And we don't have to know what it's about. We don't have to get all analytical and try to figure out what my wound is and how I'm holding on to this, you know, what this person said to me. We don't have to go there. We just need to move the energy again. And that bit of heaviness is transformed. It's very action oriented. That's why I say it's very practical that way, you know? Um, and the, the metaphor they use, though, is of the Inca seed is of a seed. In that seed is the information to grow an entire plant or an entire tree, a huge redwood tree. It's all the same in that tiny little seed. Okay, um, so the information is the information potential is just amazing. It's almost incomprehensible in certain ways. But our hucha keeps us from accessing our full carpi, which is the, all the capacities in our Inca seed. It happens two ways. It's kind of a two directional uh, flow. It's an Aini flow in a way. Because we, the more hoochie we have, we tend to be less self-aware. We tend to be less sensitive to even caring about whether, you know, we're responsible for anything. We end up being, you know, projecting things out to others. Oh, it's your fault. You quit, have to quit being so mean to me. I never catch a lucky break. I always get terrible bosses, whatever. <laughs> okay, we project it back out. We don't take ownership, so we don't look inside. Okay. On the other hand, our Inca seed, remember it's always being fed through the Pukyu by, from, from the creator, right? It's always streaming Sami into it, right? And as its nature is to drive its growth, your growth as a, from a seedling to God in the flesh, that's the growth pattern, right? And it's always seeking to, to, to move the energy outward in that direction. 
But our unconscious, our personas, our shadows, our fears, all this stuff down in the psyche, the, the root, the root, the eye of the root, all of this stuff is like putting up a screen or a filter. And so when our Inca seed Sami flows outward, it hits the screen or it hits the filter and it gets changed as, it, as we emit who we really are. And we get triggered by people. And that's like one person, I'm always having that screen up. And I'm always, you know, antagonistic with them, or I'm always condescending with them. That's the screen I put up between the total lightness of my Inca seed and the way it, I'm expressing it, because I've set up this screen in relation to this person, or maybe this group of people, or this race of people, or this gender of people, or this idea, or this religion, or whatever from the singular to the plural, we put up these screens, okay? And so it's an outward flow from our ink to see that gets blocked and it's an inward, it's an inward deficit of the light living energy that we are not bringing in as fully as we can through us. So it kind of works both ways, okay? And so we have practices to, to, to cleanse both the, the hucha flow both ways. You know, as I say, there's more than like 40 practices. Okay, and um, I, I'm ready, you know, I want to do a, an exercise and quit talking and do an exercise, but um, let's just open it up for some discussion. Any, anything coming up for you, ideas or questions, your view on this, or anything you can add to this? Feel free. Uh, I think like what is interesting also is uh, before we go into this exercise uh, and this energetic practice is like also within these challenging times and you know where we living in and uh, that we probably need to look more within and yeah really be aware of the hucha and uh, and bring more the light in us and really nourish yourself and really be blossoming but i think like some of the people also may because of these challenging times they may feel that they need to change or they may feel there's like a call or but it's kind of also scary to kind of you know <laughs> tap into this although people actually want yeah. to create a meaningful difference um yeah. Yeah. Is that call also kind of related in, with the Inca seed or, you know, how to yes. sort of yeah, activate this seed yeah. in you? Yeah, you know, we can understand it through the concept of the Inca seed, because what, what is this? What are these challenges? What is the ugliness in the world right now? It's human beings sending their hucha out because they have all of these screens. We're creating it. Okay, here's the thing the Indians say, nobody else's hucha ever has to enter your bubble. You don't ever have to take in anybody else's hucha. There's no energy vampire. There's no, you know, there's nobody that can trap you energetically. Anything that enters your energy, your mystical body, you either have consciously or unconsciously allowed in or you're hooking into it yourself, okay? So, and hooch is not bad. It's not, nothing to fear. It's just heavy. And we have a lot of heaviness. When, you know, there's, in different parts of the world, there's tremendous heaviness, and, but we're, we're feeling it in our sphere of the world right now. And it seems to have gone global in, in certain ways, okay? So first we have to recognize that this is what happens when each one of us, you know, we're like drops in the ocean. One little drop doesn't make that much of a ripple. But when you have, uh, you know, a hundred million drops of hucha, it's going to ripple through the human world and the energy world. And we're feeling a lot of people expressing a lot of hucha right now. Some people waking up to that and saying, oh my gosh, I want to take responsibility for my hucha. And vast numbers of other people saying, ain't my hucha, it's your hucha. I wish you'd get over it. <laughs> okay. So we're, we're not going to try to change them. We can't. 
gets up to there and can see. But we can react in a way that's not producing more hucha. I'm not saying we have to agree with them. We have to love them or even like them. It's okay not to like people. That's not hucha. You know, feeling anger, feeling what we call heavy or negative emotions is not hucha. It's just normal emotions. It's when you latch on. It's when you won't let go. It's when you project out and condemn others through what you're feeling that it becomes hucha. Okay. So we don't have to be, we don't have to let them get us to the same state. And we do have practices that we can reach out and we can digest some of the hucha of a group of people or the whole world. It's not easy, it's not, you can't make that much of a dent doing that by yourself. Well, it's just, I mean, the Andean tradition is practical. You're not gonna heal the world by digesting the heavy energy of the whole world, okay? It, it's gonna take more than that. But you can change the quality of your world and the way you are in a very heavy world, if you concentrate on eating your own hucha, working the hucha in your immediate family, community, state, province, or whatever, you know, kind of like think global but act local. <laughs> that works when it comes to hucha, okay? Um, but all of us working together, what's so heartening to me is there's millions of people waking up. There's millions of people facing a choice now about how they're producing Sami or Hucha. And a lot of people are choosing to do their work. That takes time, but that to me is, I'm very hopeful, it's a very positive. But we say just concentrate on yourself because just like the drops in the ocean, when we get, a hundred million of them that creates a flood of heaviness. Each one of us is a drop in the ocean of the lightness of being. And when there's a hundred million of us, we're going to shift the whole, the whole energy dynamic of the world. So it works both ways. So we want to be, we want to have, we don't want to just have tunnel vision by getting caught into the hucha. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're Would welcome. you like Anyone? to uh, gu guide us through one of those uh, yeah, practices? Sure. So what we're going to do in this exercise, in this practice, this is one of our top practices. It's the practice of the Sonko and the Inca Muyu, the Inca seed and the Sonko. When we, I said the, that the Inca seed and the sonko, the heart, the, the, the center of your feelings. By the way, let me just say, you have hucha in all of your nyawis. We have to clean our nyawis, except there's the Inca seed has no hucha and the sonko, the center of your feelings has no hucha. So we're gonna work with these two totally Sami filled centers. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to first do our practice called Saman Chakwi, which is to just take care of our own energy body for a minute. We're going to release some hucha from our energy body and empower ourselves with some Saman. Then we're going to stop the hucha release and we're going to keep bringing the Sami in and we're going to direct it to the center of our body to our Inca seed. Okay, the Inca seeds in the middle of your body, halfway between the front and the back, just under your kind of rib cage. Don't, just, just direct it into that part of your body. You can direct it in from all directions, or you can just concentrate it down through the top of your head like a laser beam into the Inca seed. And just fill this Inca seed with more Sami from the universe. It will quickly fill. And then it's going to begin to emit. That's the Aini. It's going to begin to emit, it's, it's pure Sami. It's going to begin to emit the most amazing, the highest form of Sami within you. Because your Inca seed is different than my Inca seed. It's going to emit the information, the Sami information for you to recognize your greatest power, your greatest way of being. And just take it, just take it through your whole body. When there's no room in your body, take it out into your bubble and just feel your Inca seed connecting with it consciously. This is who you really are, okay? 
And then I'm gonna ask you to bring your attention back to your Inca seed and feel the Sami then flowing up like a stream into your Sanko and fill it and connecting with your Sanko Nyawi and your physical heart. And just feel it empowering. And now you'll feel an integration of your feelings and your Inca seed, of your will and your feelings, okay? And one, and that, when we integrate the Inca seed and the Sonko, it's the greatest generator of Munai, of love under our will. So we're gonna integrate the energies of our Inca seed and our Sonko, our feelings, and you'll feel the quality of Munai wafting out like a very strong perfume and let it fill you and feel the love your Inca seed has for you. This is the love of God. This is love for you just as you are with all your present heaviness and weaknesses and fears, okay? Just love yourself the way God loves you and your Inca seed, okay? And just feel that love. This will help you flower your Inca seed. The metaphor for the Inca seed is that the, flower, the seed cracks open and germinates, and then it flowers. Our hucha keeps that bud tight. It's not, the petals aren't open. Sometimes just a few of the petals are open. Not all the petals are open. We're going to just flower our Inca seed, at least momentarily, okay? And feel the Sami of your, connect with your Inca seed. These are the goals. Connect with your Inca seed. Feel its power. Feel the Sami that is held in potential in your Inca seed. Take it into every crevice of your being. Integrate with your Sonko in order to produce Munai. Love the love of God, and then fill yourself with that and touch yourself with loving yourself just as you are. Then I'm gonna maybe, maybe let's go do one last little thing, okay? And that is in that last few moments, ask your Inca seed something. Your Inca seed must answer. Just don't, don't start ruminating about a question. Just see what arises for you. Or if you don't have a question, just listen and just see if it has a message for you and for this time, place, and condition of your life, okay? And then I'll ask you just to soften your focus and we'll come back to class. Great. It, it, it takes, it, it sounds more complicated than it is, okay? But I'll give you as much time as we can to do this, okay? So we're gonna start with Islam and Chakri. <clears throat> so some people like to just be in their own private space. Feel free to turn your video off if you want. You don't have to, but just drop in. And just let's, let's, let's sit back. Let the chair, the couch, whatever support you. Relax your, relax your muscles, especially all the little muscles around your face, your jaw, your shoulders, all the big muscle groups in your thighs, your back. And just be present. And just drop into your body and be in your body exactly how your body feels right now. And then expand your awareness beyond your body to your popo, to this energy body that's like a bubble around you and that interpenetrates your physical body. Be aware of your popo. This is your wasi. Just be who you are exactly as you are right now. You always have to start from the, the true point of where we are, our carpi in the moment. We always have Sami kind of coming down over us from the universe. We're going to picture it as a, as a stream of the light living energy coming down over our bubble. Just feel this flow of Sami down over your bubble, over the skin of your bubble where there's a lot of hucha. Just feel this downward flow of the light living energy, which is so empowering. It's like, it's like the nectar of the universe 
Just let it flow down over you in every direction, like water over a balloon. And as you feel this downward flow of Sami, just intend, gently intend in your beingness, in your mind, that any hucha, any heaviness on the skin of your bubble will be washed down by this flow of Sami, just seeing it, feeling it being uh, flowing down deep into the earth. Give your, we give our hucha to Mother Earth who, who composts it, who transforms it. So I'll be quiet for a moment. Just let the light living energy, the Sami flow down over you and just hold the intention of releasing your heavy energy. You're not trying to control it, you're just witnessing it. All your hucha down into Mother Earth. And just let the Sami flow down over you, empowering you and release any heaviness down to the earth. And now just intend to stop the hucha release, but continue to feel the sami flowing down over your popo. And as the sami flows down, begin to feel it enter your popo and into the middle of your body. It can either be streaming down through the top of your head straight down or coming in from every direction, but begin to stream this sami, intend this sami stream toward your Inca seed in the middle of your body. And just fill your Inca seed with this light living energy. As you do, as you feel that, connect with your Inca seed. This is the center of yourself. This is the center of your, the sanctuary that is you. And just fill it with the Sami. And then as it fills with Sami, it begins to emit its own uh, Sami. The finest quality of Sami begins to radiate out from your Inca seed. Just feel, this is your power. This is the Sami that lives within you. Just take it through every crevice of your body. Feel your physical body, all the cells. I'll be quiet for a moment. Just feel your body. And when your body is full, let it waft out and feel your popo. Really owning and connecting with the center of yourself. And as you fill with the Sami being emitted by your Inca seed, stream some of this Sami using your intention up into your Sonko, into the middle of your chest, to your Sonko Nyawi, the seat of your feelings, and to your heart, and feel the integration of your Inca seed and your Sonko. As this, these two centers integrate, you'll feel an even different quality of energy be created. It's moonai. It's love. 
the highest form of love. And as this moon eye is created, let it waft through you. Let it fill every crevice in, in your body and your, and your bubble. And feel the love of this, the creator through your Inca seed, the love of your Inca seed for you. And feel your love for yourself just as you are right now. There are no blocks to love when your Inca seed and your Sonko are integrated. There are no blocks to you loving yourself, seeing the beauty and grandeur, feeling the beauty and grandeur of yourself. And as you, as you own this, as you feel this and own this, let your Inca seed speak to you or ask it a question. It is full of wisdom. It is the wisdom body inside you. Let it counsel you or guide you. And then when you're ready, soften your focus and come back to the meeting. Thank you, Joe, for sharing well. beautiful practice. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people have enjoyed it to mm -hmm. connect with their Inca seed and their Sonko. Anyone care to share or have a question about that practice? If anybody has anything, uh, you can either put it in the chat or you're also welcome to come uh, and speak. Is it um, Lucita? Yes. Hi, Joan. Thank you. Um, I just want to say um, I was deeply moved. I just could really feel everything in my body. Um, I could feel it moving out. Um, I just, I woke up with Pucha today. It's been a rough week for me. Um, so this is a great, great way to release all that. Yeah. Um, but I, I was so moved by um, the alignment um, of, of the heart, the physical heart with the seed. I have never had that experience or done that before. Um, I, I have, I was got a, gave, I did receive a transmission about growing the seed and moving it out into the field, but um, I've never had that experience. And it, it felt like, oh, it felt like God. It felt mm -hmm. love, like true authentic, mm -hmm love universal like like the cosmos like it, it was holding me um all at once it, it was quite 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 a magnificent um thank the, you the, the integration of the incasy with the sonko not yes. necessarily the physical organ of the heart but the center of your feelings these are the they have no hucha you just experience the the the, the infusion of yourself of a pure yes. state and that's just a taste of what it's like when we have grown our Inca seed, we have no, we're not producing any hucha and we're living in our enlightened self or we're living in our seventh level self as God in the flesh. 
And, um, and so you know it's real and you know it's available. Yeah. We don't have small goals in the Andean tradition. We don't think small. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not, it's not ego. It's just reality that we can be God in the flesh and the flesh is God, you know, and that's the first taste of it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I could see that's their hand up, so you could come in for seeing. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, like Lucita, it was deeply moving. Um, I wasn't even feeling really any emotion, but tears started pouring down almost like um, a cleansing, is the best way I can think of. It was like as the hucha was being released, then the tears came at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And it felt like a baptism of sorts, um, which mm -hmm. was, which felt really extraordinary. And then when the, um, the integration between the Inca seed and the Tapco, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, it, I don't know if I can quite explain it, but it felt like I just expanded about a hundred times my size. Like I, I felt like I was larger than life almost. You just felt your carpi, your bubble, your capacity. What, what the fullness, your, our capacity is just beyond imagining. And, um, you know, it reminds me of something Marianne Williamson, who um, was a teacher of the Course in Miracles and a, a human potential guru and, and presidential candidate. Um, but she said, you know, uh, it's not our darkness we're so afraid of. It's our light. The huge capacity we have for light kind of scares us more than our darkness, you know. And um, when you feel how big you can be. That's beautiful that you got to touch that. That's one of the, re the reasons we do that practice. To, yeah. When we become familiar with something, it's easier to own it, work toward it, feel it, reproduce it. Yeah. Love it, you know? I'm, I'm still vibrant. Like yeah. I can still feel a lot of mm -hmm. all around me. Thank you. Awesome. Cornelia? You want to share something? Yeah. Thank you so much, Joan, to, to bring us to this exercise. For me, actually, when um, you talked about um, the energy to bring to the seat and then up to the heart, I had the feeling that I want to put my hands one to the place of the seat and one my left hand to the heart and it reminded me a kind of decoupling where actually we bring the energy from the heart to the sea to down parts to mm -hmm. um so for me it was a different flow of energy than i normally used to to feel and mm -hmm. i must be i i have the feeling that i did not yet fully allow myself to bring it up so I, I did not feel this expansion in the heart. I just had the feeling that I was um, careful to bring the energy up. I did not dare bring it up fully. And I think I need more time to do this exercise. Mm -hmm. So to yeah. be able to allow this energy now to move in another way than I used to, because probably I'm afraid that something bad could come from there. You know, I'm rather used, I have to start take yeah. the energy from my heart everywhere, not from the center that is actually me. So what would happen if I use this energy? And so yeah. not yet feel the expansion. And I think I need time to practice this exercise because it's just different than I used to practice it. I don't know yeah. what you can tell me about it. Or did well, I do something wrong? No, there's no wrong or right. There's just what we're feeling energetically, how we're flowing, and we want to be aware of how the energy is flowing or where it's not because, you know, but there's nothing wrong. We don't make mistakes. We're just aware. And um, the, the movement of energy, we work, with, we work with releasing hucha kind of in a downward flow. 
through our nyawis when we do our cleansing practices and a lot of our practices we work we cleanse down 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 we don't have to cleanse the sunko of the heart because there's no pucha there okay but one of the ways we measure our carpi, which is another way of saying how much of our capacity of our inca seed are we accessing is to see how we're able to move energy up because all of that unconscious, you know, impulses, the, the human, you know, the human kind of heavy survival energies that we all come in with and that are necessary to our life, they're not bad, but they can tend to keep us very fixed and, and stuck, okay? Um, and as we, we can transmute them by moving them up the nyawis, and then they touch the Inca seed and they're kind of transformed. They lose that animalistic and they, you know, we come touch our spirit, you know? And then once they touch our spirit, then they can touch, they can help us generate munai for ourselves first and then others. And then we can express it. And then we can see the world in both the physical, psychological, and the mystical. We have that kawai. So there's a, there's a sense of measuring by seeing, um, how, you know, like like a, a thermos we're filling, how, how high is the water level, you know, or a thermometer or something like that, you know. Um, but I, I would say that, you know, we did this, we did this very quickly. This is a practice that in the training comes very late in the training, okay? After we've done a ton of, of release of hucha, working our nyawis, becoming familiar with the capacities of our nyawis, working with spirit beings, all kinds of other things. It's very late, but it's the premier exercise or practice for you to at least touch the core of your being, which is the Inca seed, you know? And um, so that's why I'm offering it today, even though it's more like an advanced kind of an energy practice. It, it, it doesn't have to be advanced, it's true. It's just true to who we are. And when we, when we can connect our self, you know, a lot of us have trouble just doing that because as I said, when we, we, can, when we really see what we're capable of, we can be shaking in our boots. Because <laughs> you know? what do we do? We immediately, we're so hard on ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves. We immediately, the first thing we do is make a comparison. Oh my gosh, I have all that potential, but look how much I'm using. I'm so undeveloped, I'm so bad, I'm, you know, whatever. We, you know, we, we, really, we really stop ourselves from expressing our, our grandeur, as I call it. Um, so that process that you went through, I think is, is a little bit of all of that, what we commonly can feel when we first touch the center of the self that is just pure Sami and that's always connected with whatever creator is, you know? We just take our time, just take our time. I don't know if that helps you at all, understand it all or answers your question, um, but that's where I took it. <laughs> so. Okay, yeah. great. Hey. So I think there's a bit more room to go a bit more deeper into that Inca seed. Uh, yeah. As you were mentioning, like, uh, is it, yeah, is the seed of the self, but I think you're also talking, we're talking about choices and will, and yeah. um, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that in relation. Okay, to the seed. you know, we, when we say in the Andes that the Aini is the, you know, fundamental natural law, Aini is intention in action. It's our Sami in action, right? We, we're intending something, whether it's conscious or unconscious, and so we're moving energy and the universe is going to respond. And people always ask, you know, well, what's intention? What's intention? One of the ways the Andeans would answer that question is by saying, it's your Inca seed, it's your will, okay? Now your will can get badly distorted by the filters from your psyche and your fears and your emotions that are roiling around in your belly and, you know, your lack of perception or integrity in your speech. So that the, it, it, but it, the will, you, they, we say the will is in your Inca seed because it's the, the will of life to express itself. It's the will of God to express itself through you, 
okay? And that is intention. Our intention though largely is unconscious and our intention can get badly distorted by these filters, okay? But it's, so we say that our, the center of our will is in our inconceit and then, um, um, When we get feedback from the universe, we can then, usually that's when we become aware, oh, that's not what I thought I intended, or that's not what I want to have happen in my life, or, oh, I'm ashamed of myself for acting that way, or saying that, or whatever I did, or seeing somebody else, or whatever. And, and the, as the feedback comes back, then we become aware of the potential screens and hucha. It's usually only the feedback that shows us that our will has gone through our these screens okay when it comes back it feels heavy and then we take responsibility for that we again it's a process of becoming aware of the feedback or, or it doesn't have to be from the universe it can be from another person or it can be you know from your your pet dog or whatever okay um, and then we become aware of it and then we take responsibility for it. And we would use our Salman Chakri, which is this, the, the practice that you did at the beginning of the exercise we just did, where you just bring the life force energy down and release your hucha to Mother Earth. That's, it's so simple. That's the core practice of the tradition. Don Benito Kuriwaman, who was one of our masters of, of the right side work, he said with that exercise alone and another exercise where you just pull energy up from the earth, with those two practices alone, you can reach the seventh level of consciousness, which is God in the flesh and the flesh is God. Okay, so it's not kind of complicated, but our will is um, said to be in our intimacy. And it's not, we have to not understand it in the English word as willfulness, okay? And just think about it as that, the ways in which you're moving energy, whether it's conscious or unconscious. We think of will as always conscious, but it's simply the way our Inca seed is always trying to drive us, drive energy, we call it, or push the energy in a certain direction for our growth. That we either stunt that or not, or we enhance it, or we follow it, or, or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think what else to say about that. I'm sure there's lots more to say, but my, my mind is kind of blank on that right now. <laughs> so, um, you know, you know, I will say when I, we talk about will, and we're not talking about willfulness, we're just talking about moving energy, which is what Another way to talk about intention, whether it's conscious or unconscious. It's important to realize that we don't create our reality. We're not creating the universe. The, un the living universe is there, whether we're seeing it or interacting with it or alive or dead. It, it exists beyond us. And we're, we can only influence it. We're not creating it. We're barely co-creators, if you will. We can influence it. There's accidents, there's randomness in the universe. It's, it's the, one of the laws of physics. We would never say that it was your, some unconscious intent in you to develop cancer or multiple sclerosis or you know, whatever, okay? We don't look at the universe that way. There obviously is with illness, there's mind-body connections and stuff, but there's accidents that happen. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, you're you were in the Twin Towers, 9-11. That, that wasn't a message from God. That wasn't your karma. It was just a random event in, in one level, okay? Um, so we're a very non-judgmental tradition that way when it comes to kind of cause and effect and, and, and judging what's happening. But we, re we realize that we can influence. And the more you're flowering your Inca seed, in other words, the, the more capacities you're, you have available to you to use, the more powerful your Aini is, the more you're driving the cow side or pushing the cow side in the direction you want. You know, you don't have to push cow side. You don't have to push the living energy too far to totally transform your life. Sometimes it just needs a few little nudges, 
<laughs> and you think you're living in a paradigm, you know, your life suddenly feels like more of a paradise. It's all comparative, you know? So it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. We just take our little steps one after another, and then we're on the journey. Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, yeah, good. Like, I think most of the people want to become a better version of themselves and influence, right? The Hucha and the Sami and, you know, become a bit lighter and everything like that. So I think that is, a, yeah, the center has something to do with the center of the will. But how do you know that you are, you know, kind of on the right track and expressing, you know, your uh, Inca seed? Yeah. Like, how do you discern that you actually are expressing it? Or well, when you when you look oh, at well, the, yeah, yeah, when you look at the feedback you're getting, you know, um, you first have to look inside and see what you're putting out. Because, you know, a lot of times we think we're speaking in integrity and we're doing things that are not necessarily going to create any heaviness or harm or difficulties for others or for ourselves. And we discover that, uh, you know, I, th there's really some shadow part of me that's pushing this from heaviness, um, you know. And so the, the way to measure is to look at the feedback. Not every thing is going to be feedback from the universe because there is some randomness and some events. We all have things that are outside of our control. Everybody has free will, you know, and other people can do things that it can be very harmful to us or hurtful to us or feel heavy to us. We don't have to take that in, okay? But most of us tend to, especially if it's somebody we're close to. Um, but, but we want to pay attention to the feedback and, and the feedback will help alert us to what the possible filters are that sent that kind of energy out in the first place, you know? And, um, you know, they say hindsight's 2020. And really it is. And that's part of, you know, it, it's always hindsight looking at the feedback. You know? I mean, sometimes we're aware right in the moment, but usually we have to stop and think about how everything's connected, how things are coming and going in our lives. And, um, and so it's, it, that, that is our kawa, using our mystical sight to be able to gauge, okay? Um, so all of those things I talked about in terms of filters, the screens, the heaviness we have already accumulated that we haven't dealt with that keeps us from fully absorbing the life force energy freely and radiating it. We're less empowered that way. Um, being oblivious to the fact that we are connected to whatever creator is, that we are in interaction with the universe and those kinds of things. All of that will keep us from flowering our Inca seed. Our Inca seed is going to flower on its own. We're going to be something. We're going to express our humanness some way, okay? But it will be less of our carpi or more of our carpi. And that, that feeling of being driven or that inner, you know, we have inner dissonance and we also have inner resonance. And when we're feeling that inner resonance, something is just pulling you to a certain relationship or somebody, something is just pulling you to a certain uh, hobby or an expression of one of your gifts or a, a lifestyle or, a, or a, a profession. That can be your ink seed. You don't consciously know why you're being pulled that way, but that's the resonance of your ink seed. So we wanna be aware of those resonances. People call that intuition. And when you can really sense through the body what feels a little dissonant, what feels a little resonant, that, that we would say is the, the will, the drive of your Inca seed. So it's in so many ways, this is a path of self-inquiry, self-awareness. Yeah, beautiful. I think that's a, a good way to, uh, yeah, discern and to see what kind of feedback you get and how you know how yeah. you're feeling on your path i think yeah. like, we're talking also about on the personal level on the inca c so working on ourselves and i you know i do your practices and i find them very very useful and effective actually but i think 
uh, aside from ourselves, there was also a connection with the outer world. We were talking a little bit about the feedback as well, but I think it's also the connection with, you know, uh, the people around us or yes. right, the world and the, and the cosmos. Like, how, how does that all relate to with the Inca scene? Yeah, yeah. You know, he, there's a lot to talk about in terms of our Aini relationships with other human beings. But the first thing I think we need to understand is that you have your Inca seed and you know what? Everybody else has their Inca seed and their Inca seed is going to express itself in a totally unique way. I think this is especially important for parents. We, we've grown up with our load of hucha and shadow usually because of our childhoods, <laughs> okay? The things that are imposed upon us by our parents, by our authority figures, by our culture, all of those things that start suppressing our Inca seed because we're just trying to get what we need as human beings, love and nurturing and safety and support and those kinds of things, right? So the, um, so that happened to us, right? And so we're all in the journey of then of reflowering our Inca seed. Um, but we have to be aware that everybody's Inca seed is a unique expression of God. And although there might be a lot of overlap, it's not going to be just like us. Okay. And so we have to allow for the flowering of another person's Inca seed. And it, we don't have to like everybody. We don't have to be feel totally compatible with everybody, that's okay. That doesn't create hucha, okay? But what, what will create hucha is when we start unloading judgment on people, expectations on other people, um, you know, um, that they act a certain way or they look a certain way or they talk a certain way or whatever, because that's the way our Inca seeds telling us is right, the right expression for us. This is especially true. The most powerful parents, the parents who are going to be what we call fourth level parents, are going to be the parents that can look at each of their children and know each of their children has a unique Inca seed. And even though you cannot understand why your daughter wants to be an artist and you think that she'll never be able to earn a living that way or whatever, you will let her explore and see if that is the gift of her Inca seed flowering right now or your son or whatever, to be able to at least allow that it's not a shadow thing being expressed, but that is their ink seed being expressed. And then you will have a, a family garden in which everybody is thriving rather than the two parents, like the two, you know, invasive weeds trying to, trying to you know, crowd out the, the expression of these other flowers and stuff. But that's, so that's the most immediate way we see the inner and the outer and this happens at all levels with our friends with our authority figures with our just the archetypal energies of our culture at, at large you know some people feel like i was just born in the wrong century or i was just born in the wrong culture never mind i was born in the wrong family and that is where your ink the seed is trying to take you someplace that is going to tell you you have to have the courage to leave the herd. It's the Siki that keeps us safe in the herd, the sheep, you know? And we have to all find our way. And it may be very comfortable staying in the herd, but just being your own sheep. You're, you don't have to be the black sheep. That doesn't have to be that, okay? But sometimes you will realize, oh my gosh, I'm not a sheep, I'm not a sheep, you know? I'm a giraffe. And you're gonna go find a group of giraffes to be with. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm trying to make this fun because we're, we're, we're a playful tradition as well. But it, if we can look at it in those light ways, it doesn't always have to be so important and heavy and consequential, con consequential, even though it is, okay? But we have to feel the resonance and we have to own the resonance in another. So if you're only looking, if you're only resonating with yourself, and you're not in Aini with other people's resonances, their Inca seeds. You're going to try to impose yourself, your worldview on others in the world. And you'll see other people trying to do that to you, you know. And um, so 
that's, I think, one way right now. There's a lot of other things we could say about our interactions with others in the world. But I think that that's one way to just honor the diversity of this tiny little seed with this huge information field and give everybody the maximum space to flower, to bloom and flower. Yeah. And to discern when it's a healthy flowering or it's pucha driving the energy. You'll, you'll be able to see that right away. Okay. It's just, you can't think that because it's uncomfortable for you or it doesn't look right to you or you don't think it's good for that person for you that is you you don't want to prevent somebody else's flowering because you're imposing your own will on them or you're 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 flowing your own ink of seed through your own screens and and you want them to go through the same screens and filters you have put up you know so so maximum the maximum uh, um, fertilizer maximum sami maximum benefit of the joke less judgment less constriction you know we all have an ethical system it's not that anything goes of course we want our kids to grow up knowing you know within an ethical system there's right or wrong there's there's more helpful or harmful those kind of things but in terms of the flowering of the self it's a, it's kind of a separate energy dynamic in a way so it's just really? one thought yeah, no, I think it's really nice uh, to honor all the different flowers and plants and animals, all the different species uh, uh, that derive from yeah. the seed. Uh, so yeah. I think that's really beautiful. And yeah. also that, yeah, people can really listen to their intuition yeah. to actually make room to nourish yeah. this Inca seed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the word Sami, we, it, 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 the explanation for it is light living energy, but it translates also to nectar. Nectar, just like a flower would be full of nectar, okay? We want to be so full of Sami that we have enough to feed all the people in our lives. They can come and, and, and taste our nectar and, and, you know, be invigorated by our nectar. And we don't want to be afraid of any of you, of, of energy but we want to be able to be feel free to to taste other people's nectars it's like the world is an energetic smorgasbord and we should sample it all you know um so it, it, we think about it as the, being the hummingbird rather than the condor the condor is the totem of the hucha eater in the andes we don't want to be looking around just for hucha. Oh, I need to eat hucha. That person needs to eat hucha. Hucha, 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 hucha. Yeah, we can be the hummingbird. The hummingbird sees nectar everywhere and says, oh, I want to taste that. Or I have so much nectar, I'm attracting the hummingbird. It's a huge shift in our, our the way we're using our mystical eyes and our psychological filters to engage the world to say, how can I be a bringer of Sami rather than only where am I producing Pucha? Thank you. I think there's one question if there's room uh, about um, the Inca seed and highly sensitive people. Someone is asking, yeah, wondering about that, how that influences uh, yeah. those highly sensitive people. Yeah, yeah you know, we, we say in the Andes that your popo is the one thing you own. Nobody can enter your energy body without your conscious or unconscious permission. And we also see, we say we want to be in complete, the complete owners of our own energy interchanges, how we're putting out energy and how we're taking in other people's energies. And if someone is overly sensitive, Anything that's over, anything that's causing hucha, being sensitive is a wonderful thing. But if you're overly sensitive and you're being inundated by energy, you have to ask yourself, why am I letting all of this energy in? According to the tradition, we just say, no, stop it at, stop it at the skin of your bubble. Only, only tune yourself to that sensitivity when it's useful for you. Okay, so I don't know if the person's asking this because it's an issue for them, but we're, we can be super intuitive or sensitive or empathetic, 
when we're fully in Aini interchange, when we're flowered and we're, we're, we're really tasting all the energies of the universe, but it's a Sami filled experience. It's never an overwhelming experience because we know how to mediate the energies. It's like, you know, uh, I can have a cabinet full of yummy white wine and I'm just going to have a glass at a time. <laughs> you know? That's kind of how we look at the energies of the universe as well. That it's up, it's your will, your will, your intention. And nobody can not, we say not even God can enter your energy body without your permission. That's free will. Not even God will trump your will. You have to invite God in whatever your conception of God is, you know, so. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. You're I welcome. You're nearly close to, uh, yeah, the time. So I uh, want to thank you, Joe, uh, for being here and uh, sharing your amazing wisdom. I know you have so much to teach. <laughs> so I encourage people who want to learn more uh, about Joe to uh, visit her website. And uh, yeah, thank you once again for your amazing storytelling. I uh, always very much enjoy it. So is there any last words that you want to share or? Uh... Well, I just thank you all for being here. And those of you who are listening, maybe that are not on live right now. And um, it's, it's my honor to share this tradition. It's changed my life. And um, I know it can change your life as well, but hasn't already. Um, and um, so it's, it's truly an honor to be able to share. It's always a joy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for also for all of the listeners uh, who are here today, thank you also. And also for the people who will be viewing the talk later. Uh, we hope to stay connected and uh, yeah, to join us again at one of our events and uh, you can already maybe mark your calendar. There's another event coming up on July 23rd with uh, Robert Wakely Wheeler and Wilbur Salas Atasi, who will be creating a despacho. So you're all welcome uh, to come then and it's an Indian uh, offering basically. So uh, yeah, we will be uh, sending some praise to Pachamama and of course you can uh, bring in your own intentions to manifest them in your lives so uh, thank you once again and uh, if you want to stay updated you can of course join our mailing list and uh, or follow us on social media so you know what we're um, all doing so I leave you all to this and uh, once again thank you and have a wonderful weekend and day thank you Al. Bye-bye. Bye.